All right, and now we're going to have Dan Black come back up and, um, as the president of NACE, yeah. talk about NACE. Thank you. Oh, I have a. Oh, yeah, I'm, you I'm mic'd up. Okay. <laughs> About the clicker. Okay. How's everyone doing? Good. Lunch is next. It is coming soon. Despite what you saw on the website, I am not going to talk to you for an hour. Um, I told Stephen last week, I'm like, an hour? How about 20 minutes? Does that sound good? 20, 25? He said, absolutely. Um, so I'm going to talk to you a little bit today about NACE, the National Association of Colleges and Employers. How many of you, by show of hands, have heard about NACE? How many of you are members? Ooh, just my audience. I just saw most of the hands go down. Good, good. Um, I am currently, and, and by the way, this is feeling very much like, you know, when you go on those trips, and it's a free trip but you have to spend 20 minutes hearing <laughs> about the rental properties. I'm that guy. So I'm going to tell you about the rental property. It's not the hard sell, but it's feeling very much like that. Um, now, my role at NACE, I'm, I'm the current president. And the way that NACE works is that um, the president actually holds office for one year. There are three total years uh, that you commit to when you agree to be president. So it's president-elect. As president and then past president. So they rope you in for three. They, oh, it's just one year. And, and funny story, they, uh, when they asked me to be president and president-elect, I said yes, not knowing that I was going to get this job at EY. And so what happened was this past July 1, um, when I was I just finished telling my wife not, not too long back, boy, I've been doing this campus thing. Maybe I could go for a change. So starting July 1, I got my new job at EY, and I got the presidency at NACE. And she said, is that good? Enough change for you? So it's been, uh, it's been a fun run. It's been an absolutely fun run. Um, so what is NACE? For those of you, it looks like you're all familiar, you've heard about it. Let me give you just a little bit more history. It's a, it's a not-for-profit, obviously. We've been around for some time, um, based in Bethlehem, Pennsylvania. So appropriate for this time of year. Uh, the first time I went to visit, I asked the executive director, I'm like, how do you get there? And what did she say? Follow the star. I'm like, no, no, no. <laughs> really, how do you get there? Because that's not fun to me anymore. I really need to get some, some directions. Um, and what you'll see here as, as, uh, as background is that we have a lot of higher education members, so uh, colleges, universities, two-year, four-year, uh, and beyond. We also have a lot of employing organizations, so people who do what most of the people in this room do, um, which is hire college talent. So a total of about 10,000 members. I will tell you right now it is more skewed towards colleges. More of our members are college members versus uh, employer members, and that's really been what my term as president has been about. I'm about halfway through. Um, our fiscal year runs July 1 to June 30. And my commitment to the organization has been during that one year, they try, they say, well, try to do like one or two things. Don't, don't overshoot your, uh, your potential, especially you, Dan. Uh, it's limited. And so, so try to focus on one or two things. And my thing was we need to get more employers involved in order for NACE to continue to be the robust resource that it has been. Um, and in full disclosure, and I can say this since there's no one else from the NACE staff here, um, NACE, in my opinion, has had its ups and downs in terms of relevance um, and, and usefulness. And I can say that as an employer very comfortably now sitting in the, you know, in, kind of in the president's seat um, because I've been involved for a very long time with NACE. It's been about 16 years that I've been involved in one way or another as a presenter on committees, uh, served on the board for a few years before I went on to be the president. And, and a, the initial, my initial exposure to NACE was my three bosses ago that we have to, you have to join NACE, you have to be a part of it, I'm involved, you have to be involved if you work for me. And I said, well, then in, involved I shall be. And I went in, and, and a lot of the information I pulled at that time, to be fair, in the late 90s and early 2000s, what I got out of it, other than a couple of really good relationships I built, um, seemed to me like it was either dated or not as relevant for me as a large employer or very heavily skewed towards the colleges, or the worst of all is when I would go to events, the events seemed to be tailored for smaller colleges that I, wouldn't, that I wouldn't come and visit for them to come up to me and kind of harass me to come onto their campus. That's what, that's what NACE was to me originally. Um, and I'm happy to tell you, and what I'll explain to you now, is that it really has evolved. It really has evolved. There are lots of great changes happening. In addition to these 10,000 professional members, we also have a lot of what we call business affiliate members. And I will tell you, without reservation, that as EY, we have a, a fairly hefty budget, as you, you might imagine. I've got 330-some-odd recruiters um, spanning North and South America and lots of zeros in my budget to hire those 16,000 people. But where to spend that money um, gets trickier and trickier. I'm, I think they call me the whale. A lot of people call me and say, if we could land EY, that would be great. We want some of those zeros. We want them to spend on us. And, and being at NACE and in that environment, I've gotten the exposure to a lot of excellent what we call business affiliates, consultancies and, and vendors and up-and-coming technologies that I just never would have found in an environment that, that was so safe to my just exploring them and, and, and hearing what they're all about. So, so that, that's also incorporated in our membership. And it's something that we as a board 
made a specific decision to do is include that business affiliate membership on an ongoing basis because we felt it was very relevant to our members, both on the college side and the employer side. Um, you'll see here this last bullet. We've got lots of people working with us. So we have uh, actual staff. Um, unlike the regional associations, have you heard of the like SOACE and Eastern Ace? That we're actually not formally associated with them in any way, other than our names sound similar. But a lot of people don't realize that. Um, one of the bigger differences between the regionals and, and, and national, other than the geography covered, is that we actually have a full-time staff of about 30 people working at NACE in, in Bethlehem, under the star. And, uh, and they do an absolute wonderful job at, 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 at running the organization and providing great membership benefits. But it's augmented, certainly, by the board, uh, which I'm proud to serve on. A, it's a who's who in, in the industry of, of college recruiting, but also committee, uh, committee members and volunteers. So the member volunteers really drive the success of NACE and, and help us to execute on our goals. Um, our mission, put very simply, is, is we are focused on the professionals. And you've got to read this the right way. You know, it has employment of the college educated, but we're not about the students. We're not. I mean, ultimately, the students benefit, but we're about those professionals, like those of you in the room, uh, that are focused on the employment, the hiring, the career coaching of the college educated. And that's college educated in its broadest definition. So you know, again, two-year college, community college, four-year, PhDs, MBAs, we're kind of scraping the surface a little bit, not really our wheelhouse. Um, but anything that we can do to help professionals involved in this business do their business better is of interest to us. And so I'll tell you that for you know, the better part of the 50 or 60 years we've been around, this has not changed very much. Maybe a, you know, a few links of comma here, a few uh, changes in nomenclature, got rid of some of the old English that was in there, right? But otherwise, our mission has stayed relatively steady over the course of the last you know, five or six decades. Um, and, and as I've alluded to earlier, and what I'll get into for the balance is kind of what we're focused on. We take that mission and then we turn it into goals, like any good board should, and let's operationalize it and see how we achieve it. Um, and there are four main goals that we work on. I took the fourth one out. That's around how we, we operate as an organization, our staff. But these three, as you'll see, they're really focused in three primary areas that we find uh, are going to be the most beneficial to our members. So it is advancing that body of knowledge. And, and these evolve very quickly over time. So that body of knowledge used to be the mailer you would get, you know, something glossy, the handouts, what we would send to college, and box shipments and things like that. What that is today, the body of knowledge, is more about what you can access readily. We have a, a grab and go section on our website. You can just, you know, if you're running into a meeting, grab uh, a hot topics and background on that social media, you know, all, all things virtual. So, so working on making sure that you have the information you need to sound smarter in front of your boss, certainly, um, but also to be able to do your job better. Full disclosure, fully admit, being recorded. Hello, everyone out there. We've worked hard at this for a long time. We've worked hard at it for a very long time. And I feel that, especially in the last five to six years, NACE has done an outstanding job at being at the forefront of what's going on and what's important to people in our profession. And it, I, I'll ask you not to take my word for it, but to check out the website yourself after we get, get out of uh, our session today. Take a look at naceweb.org and see what I'm talking about. It's, it's topics that are of top of mind, um, things that are on your mind, certainly on your bosses, your colleagues. Uh, and they're being discussed and argued and debated and supplemented um, by people who actually know what they're talking about in the field. Go figure. And who have you know their their, their interest isn't just sharing is in just sharing information. Next is fostering relationships. Um, you know every recruiter that's what we do. Um, and if you're in college services, getting to know people and interact with people, that's a big part of your job as well. Um, providing good opportunities for professionals to meet other like professionals um, is something we've been about for a very long time and something we continue to focus on. But again, as our mission has stayed the same. The goals have changed a bit. So how do we foster those relationships? We can't always count on uh, you, know, you having the budget to necessarily travel to a live event, particularly when we used to have our annual conference. It used to only be once every three years. Now it's annually, but we know it might be tough for you to come or for you to bring your whole staff with you because it's expensive. So we offer lots of other ways for you to connect, whether that's virtually or more locally. I'll talk about more of that in a second. And then last, and this one has really um, kind of taken up some, you know, gathered some steam over the, last, the course of the last, uh, I'd say, two to three years, is really standing at, you know, and serving as a voice for the profession. 
Um, and so advocacy is, is something that we are, are spending a lot more time and effort on now. Uh, no shortage of topics, as you can imagine, in recruiting that are, are uh, you know, of, of interest to our members. But actually going, we, we, we just got back from a trip not long ago uh, to Washington, meeting with congressmen and lawmakers about you know, topics of the day. So, so these, are our, these are what we're focused on today. Now, here's the part where you know, I'm going to channel my inner Ron Pupil for those of you who remember him. And, but wait, there's more. You know, set it and forget it. Right, OK. So this is what I want you to walk away with, um, is, is if you are not an active member, or maybe if your membership has lapsed, or maybe if you're considering it but you're not sure why, here are the, the four takeaways I think I, I'd like you to walk away with after today about NACE. First and foremost is knowledge. I think so many of us, particularly if you're in a, uh, um, in, a, in a management role or have been in your role for a, little bit, for a little while, you tend to rely on intuition a little bit more around what's going to work and what's not. Um, there's some great information that NACE puts out very regularly to help you to think a little bit more strategically about those topics. So the salary survey, which is listed there, comes out three times a year. And I will tell you, it does not, it's not going to tell me exactly what my competitor is paying. I look for PwC every time when I go in there. Uh, but it does give me some nice direction on salary trending. Um, particularly you know, on, it, before, during, and after uh, maybe a blip in the economy. I want to see who's coming back to campus. What are they offering? Are bonuses in vogue again? Is Relo in vogue again? Because that stuff goes in and out like the tide. And the salary survey really helps me to get a gauge on the pulse, not of just what my direct competitors are doing. I know what they're doing. But on what the industry in general is doing. So the salary survey, um, things like the journal that uh, covers hot topics of the day written by our members. Um, legal reviews I find to be extremely helpful on topics that I am, you know, I want to be more educated about. So uh, if you look in, in recent past about paid versus unpaid internships, um, visa and visa and immigration and laws around that, you know, the meeting of the cap, I'm sure if you're like us, that's something that we think about quite a bit. But getting a, a good legal opinion from a, an independent third party, kind of a nice way to go. I find that my general counsel's office tends to be, you know, focused very much so on what affects EY only. I like to see uh, an opinion that, that is a little bit broader than that so I can draw some other conclusions. And then last but not least, custom research and surveys. Again, kind of a, a resurgence in this area for us. We have a great research team. If there's something that you particularly want to find out about your school, your company, your employer, your industry, your geography, your location, you name it, um, we are producing regular custom research on things you want to know about. You want to have a focus group of 200 students about how much they like or don't like your application process? We can do that. Um, you want to find out where, where is the hotbed of finding the next, uh, next wave of female engineers? We can help you look. Um, th that's the kind of thing that I, I think is the future for us, is helping to be a little bit more tailored as we've all gotten a little bit more tailored in seeking our talent. Number two, development. Um, this is something, again, as, as a leader of a large team, finding the right opportunities to educate my staff has been, it gets hard. I mean, there's only so much that I want to teach. There's only so much they want to listen to me, right? And then it's about where else can I go? So you look at your organization as a whole, and there's all kinds of, uh, I'll say, a little bit more generic kind of peanut butter. Oh, yeah, you can take an executive presence course or a, a presentation course or a how to manage your business or a budgeting course. But if you want to get into good, hardcore recruiting skills, so whether that be attraction, whether that be interviewing, whether that be selling, branding, you name it. Um, most companies don't offer that outside of the recruiting department. And you know what? The person offering it in the recruiting department is, is the, the old 40-year-old guy that's been doing it forever that has one idea on what that should look like and maybe is not as up-to-date as he should be. Guilty, right? So NACE is saying, hey, that's great, Dan. I'm sure you do a great job at training your staff, wink, wink. But we could give you some other perspectives that maybe are a little bit more up-to-date that are, are great best practices being done by other companies, um, you know, thought leadership from people outside of your organization, what better thing to present to your staff than another perspective, another way for them to build their skills? So I am shameless about offering opportunities to my staff. Jenna is here right, right now to say, if there is a chance for you to learn something from someone other than me, awesome. Please come. I take at least 10 of my staff to our NACE conference every year. And if nothing else, other than the development, they come back saying, we got it pretty good here at EY. I'm like, yeah, OK. That's all, you're all right. We just finished, for the recruiters in the room, we just finished uh, putting together and compiling um, professional standards in university relations and recruiting. It is a great, great resource. And we're going to be building out coursework on top of that on things like, where are you in the spectrum of baseline to best in class in attraction, application, early identification, diversity, metrics? 
And this was compiled by a group. We had an outside consultant, but we also had about 15 different people involved, heavily members, um, that are leaders in the, in the industry, um, supplying their thoughts and vision and, and their best practices around all these topics. So how do you know if you're doing a good job, other than, you know, well, we've got a good high acceptance rate, uh, we hire enough people, we meet our hiring goals. How do you know where you are on that spectrum? What better way than to benchmark against other people? And that's exactly what those standards do. Um, hosting virtual events, webinars, and then custom events. Uh, in April, I'll be heading down to Washington to do a, a, an event at, at the Red Cross because they wanted us to come and, and do something personal for their team, and they get the benefit. Now, that comes with a cost, of course, but it's not the cost, not what I would charge. I would charge way more than what I think they have to pay, right? uh, but access to, to luminaries and visionaries in the field, and me on top of the luminaries and visionaries. Um, people that can come and give specific updates on specific topics. I taught a course here not too long ago. I mean, Jen, Jen's been here, obviously, and seen some of the stuff we've done around school selection to, to focus on what Jen just covered. We actually have a, a five-hour course on school selection, if that's something you want to go through, if you're going through that exercise. So, so lots of things that you can do both overall but also customize. And then last is leadership opportunities. Um, you know, having the, the, the great fortune to be here at EY for 20 years has been, it's been amazing. Um, but to have a chance to serve on a board of directors you know, outside and do something totally different has been phenomenal. Um, I started just by uh, uh, being involved in committee work, then I chaired a committee, and then I ran our annual conference, and then I ran for the board. And it has been such a rewarding experience, maybe for you, but maybe for that really promising person on your team that's looking for something else, kind of to augment their CV or, or you know, to add into their arsenal of skills. It's, something, it's a great thing to do and great exposure for both them as well as you and your organization. Number three, relationships. And this is something that I really rely very heavily on. The NACE directory, once you're a member, I have access to every single member's contact information, um, which is searchable, which is great. So if there's a school I need to be at, I don't know who the contact is, I can find out. If there's a recruiter I want to talk to or a company I want to find out more about, but I don't know the recruiter, now I do. And so it's kind of that, you know, that, I don't know if it's an unwritten rule, but when you contact someone, you say you're from NACE, um, I almost always get a call back or an email back. And I do the same thing when I get the same, I saw you're in the NACE directory, I wanted to ask about EY's fill in the blank. Um, that kind of access to people that you want to be in touch with um, through this organization, in my, I mean, that's worth the cost of admission right there, in my opinion. But there's other things that we offer for, for uh, networking. Obviously, we have our annual conference, shamelessly plugged June 8th to 11th, San Antonio. Come on down, y'all. Right? So that'll be great. We also offer local events. We have these face-to-face -face events in, in eight to 10 cities that we run every year, where if you can't get to the national conference, there's a good chance there'll be a local one somewhere in your market. So we just ran one in Chicago. It's usually the largest in New York, Miami, Atlanta. Um, LA, so we have some face-to-face. -face. We also run recruiting roundtables, where it's you and a bunch of other recruiters from that local area getting together, talking about what's on your mind. We get your topics ahead of time, and that's the agenda for the day, or for half a day, to talk through kind of re recruiting trends and issues. Um, we've added these mini cons uh, conferences along the way, and, and this year we ran a social media conference in Philadelphia, and another one in San Jose. I mean, we had people from LinkedIn, and we had Jerry, and you know, we had some real luminaries. Uh, Steve was busy, but uh, you know, we invited him. He wouldn't. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> no response. There we go. Oh, okay, he's phoning me. Um, so lots of opportunities to connect with other people that do what you do, uh, and people that you want to get in front of. This last piece, social media. I don't want to be, again, that, that guy, the over 40 guy, because I am, that's talking about social media. Um, but it is a nice way through NACE to get involved and, and, and dip your toe a little further in the water um, with your own connections, not necessarily with students. And so we have a LinkedIn discussion group for, LinkedIn, uh, for, for NACE. We also have a Twitter channel. I actually did a Twitter chat with Haim last week, uh, which, which was great. So a great way to connect and maybe up your game a little bit in social media if you're one of those kind of tangential lurkers. right? Um, and last but not least, I mentioned this advocacy, and I, I, won't, I won't beat a dead horse, but you can see here some of the topics that we're, that we're covering. Um, we actually did engage a consultancy this year to, to help us with our advocacy efforts, and it has been terrific. Um, we will be coming out as an organization this week um, to the rest of our membership with a, a first destination survey. Uh, we're, we're doing some work around that for a public comment period, but that's something that will impact you, whether you're in the college side or on the, on the recruiting side, um, but it's things like that, like STEM, like you know, internships, paid and unpaid. Um, these are the things that impact your profession, and to be ahead of them by getting you know, the best thoughts and thought leadership from people in the field, I think could put you in a really good position at your, at your organization. So 
So next step, so if you're the first hundred callers, but wait, you know, right? Yeah. The peeler, the pearer, it cuts a can. Okay, I'm getting, I'm aging myself, right? Um, a few things that I would encourage you to do. Again, there is no hard sell here. I, I think um, what we've done and what we've been able to build sells itself. We have just re-engineered our website. And so I'm really excited about that. And I think Joey would be proud of us. It's very engaging. There's a lot of video. There's very like, you know, you can get to exactly where you want to go to and, and, uh, and, and find what you need to find. Check out the website. From there, get a sense for membership. Uh, very reasonably priced. We just actually redid our whole membership model so that you can buy what, what's needed. So for me, a large organization, I have an inclusive membership that includes every single one of my staff. That begins January 1st. So every single recruiter at EY will have access to all of the NACE um, offerings. And that's, you know, I mean, for the low, low price. Yeah. Um, you can see it on the, on the website. Um, but find out what's right for you. But then get connected. If you're not sure if NACE might be good for you or not, please let me know. Um, I'd be more than happy to talk to you. I actually have an entire membership engagement committee of about 15 people that are, are, are standing by, uh, waiting to take your call. Um, but to answer questions, because I, like I said, I don't like being strong-armed into anything. Um, I wouldn't have asked Stephen for the time to talk about NACE if I didn't think there was some benefit for you, um, you know, and your organizations to come out of it. But to, f to fully understand that, I, I know that that means some personal conversations, understanding your exact situation, and I'm more than happy to have those conversations with you if, uh, if that's something you would like. And then, uh, you know, become a member. So um, thank you so much for your time. I'd love to take a few questions if, uh, if we have a little time for that. OxyClean is calling, and they're, 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 they need a new spokesman. I'm in. I'm in. So, so our host and the guy who's uh, buying us lunch uh, <laughs> wants to know if he has a few minutes. Uh, do, you think, do you think it's possible to say no to that kind of thing? He could. He could. So, you know. um, lunch is not hot. It's cold. So we're, it's we're, it's we a minute. great lunch, and we should be very grateful to EY for, for hosting it. Uh, questions? Nobody gets, an, nobody gets lunch until there's at least one question. There's got to be at least one question. So there, there we go. go. There we go. Our, he, our sister organization from Sherm. Yes. yes you, now you get two lunches. <laughs> hey, Dan. Uh, thanks again for sure. uh, a lot of this inf informative presentations. Um, I'll actually approach you later about something to talk about. But um, my, okay, I'm intrigued. Okay. <laughs> but uh, my my first question, my my first question, because he says I get two questions. No, I'm just kidding. He, he's married. <laughs> yeah. Oh, okay. Ah, <laughs> uh, oh, dang it. All right. <laughs> So, so Dan, you mentioned about um, having a lot of this research and this knowledge information and mm -hmm. stuff like that. Besides the Job Outlook report, can you talk a little bit more about some of the stuff that NACE produces, that's especially anything that's kind of new that might be useful for us? A absolutely. So there's, there's um, public pieces that we put out, or a piece we put out for public consumption, uh, and then there, is, there are resources that we have strictly for membership. So you know, if, you, if I look back over the last six months on what's hot, clearly a lot of it on, around um, uh, the reissuance of the Higher Education Act and what that means for colleges and people that recruit students, that's hot. Uh, we've done a few pieces recently on veterans hot hiring, which is great, and some resources, and so I'm going to shamelessly steal your, your materials. I have no problem there. Uh, so veterans, millennials is another thing. We've done, we've done some surveying around millennials, their preferences for hiring, um, candidate application, and what that looks like, and how to slim that down, just to name a few. And again, w a lot of this is what you'll see kind of in the media. We, we do get you know, quoted a lot in the media, but a lot of the additional resources are available for membership only, so that, you know, but, but those are a few topics that are I think uh, you know very topical for the day. Yeah. Yeah. One, one, one sec. Sorry, we need this so that you can to uh, record you. Yes. People can. <laughs> yeah, so that you can be recorded and we can later use it against you. <laughs> Hi, Naomi Berman, Career Catalyst. So, when I was working for a corporation, I had a lot of trouble with NACE when I was trying to get a sense what the colleges mm -hmm. could, could could share with me about your organization and the job po when the job postings were on off and resumes right. coming and going and right. it was very difficult to get people at the different schools who knew about you know exactly what your program was about. There were a lot of... Our there program was a, meaning NACE? Or? NACE okay. was about. They, okay. they didn't have advocates at every school that Correct. were familiar. So I had trouble in that area, and I wanted okay. you to talk to that point. Yeah. And then also I'm very interested in what kind of recruiter training that you offer and what that looks sure. like. Sure. So um, to answer the first one, yeah, I mean, just like with the, on the employer side, on the college side, we don't have advocates everywhere. 
um, you know, whether it's a you know, newer person in the role or they hadn't seen a, you know, a return or they haven't you know, been active so they don't know what's new and what's being offered. Um, and so coming to NACE expecting to have you know, kind of keys to the kingdom at every university across the country is not realistic. Um, however, if you take a look at our membership roles, we do have a very substantial number of, of, of universities and colleges that are affiliated with NACE, um, and the ability to reach out to them and connect to them either live at a conference or event or through NACE or the directory. Um, I mean, I've used it very successfully. I, I've also not really had much of a problem. As an employer, most colleges want to answer that phone if you're calling about when does the resume drop, right? I mean, it's usually the other way around that's a little trickier. Um, but I always encourage people, if there are specific employers, colleges, programs, et cetera, that we as an organization, we NACE, need to be looking into to let me know personally. So if you, you, know, if you have that experience going forward and, oh, I'm not familiar with NACE, oh, let me put you in touch with that Dan guy. Just set aside three hours because he's, he's a talker and, uh, and he'll take you through. So, that, so that's number one. Um, secondly, in terms of training, it's a, it's a wide array of training. It's, it's, most of it is related on the employer side to, um, to the, the business of recruiting. So I mentioned how to make uh, priority school selections is one, how to assess your own campus function. So creating metrics on how to know whether or not you're being su successful, you know, your ROI, so whether, you know, again, like acceptance rates or, or turnover or conversion or funnel statistics, um, things like that. We also have uh, interviewing that, uh, skills that we can do, and then we're building out more as a result of this new university relations and recruiting study that we just finished and, and that piece of work. So, yeah. I also have a new director of development that we just hired permanently on staff who is Phenomenal. And so if you wanted to get a full idea of the suite of what's available, uh, it would just be a matter of putting you directly in touch if you want with her. I'd be happy to do that. Anyway. Yeah. Okay, we'll do one more question. One more, Bruce, yeah. Okay. So less of a question and more of a testimonial. Uh, Verizon. Yes. I did not pay him. <laughs> he promised me lunch. So. <laughs> I did, that's true. Um, <laughs> we, we've been a member and we just re-upped our membership at Verizon for next year. And internally, I can tell you the salary survey piece was very well received by our compensation team when we were doing you know, analysis and so forth. So the salary survey alone is, is worth its price. But uh, of, of recent time, we ran into an issue with our finance group. And they said, well, we're getting into this market, and we think that we should be paying entry-level talent X. And you know, the business partners and the recruiting teams were saying, well, we think it's Y. And you know, Jennifer, who's here, one of my team members, was able to quickly you know, access information from NACE that backed up a lot of the data that the HR team was was bringing to the table and and we're, we're able to push back a little bit you know from a client perspective and say here's you know real data to kind of support where we're headed so yeah. um, it's just a tremendous resource and and between the salary survey and the networking opportunities it's it's very well worth it if there's anyone that's on the fence right. so thanks Bruce. Wait, can we do yeah, the, uh, is like a quick question since that wasn't really a question? Sure, yeah. yeah. I'll, I'll just say something. As we call it, College Career Com is also a member of NACE. We have been for, I don't know, 10, 15 mm -hmm. years or something. We exhibit at their um, annual conference. And um, even though we're a quote unquote affiliate, so we don't kind of quite fit into the college, mm -hmm. college group or the employer group, there have been a number of times where I've had a problem, question, whatever, trying to connect people. And like Dan said, you can go to the website, you can log in, you can go to the membership directory, and then if I need to find who is the proper point of contact at Verizon, boom. There it is. We're careful not to use that for selling, right? Right. That would be a big no-no. <laughs> um, but I don't but think that Connecting is okay. Connecting right? yeah. is yes. okay. Yeah, I mean, if, if we were having a conversation, Dan's like, you right. know, hey, you know, you're in Minnesota, do you know anybody at such and such a school? Yeah. You know, you have access to that information. We do as well, and it, it's really quite phenomenal yeah. how you can um, grab that. Thank you, uh, James Furch from WPP. I was wondering if I know you offer some custom research yeah. solutions. Do you offer custom like implementation solutions? I know a lot of the things we're talking about today are quite big picture. I would love to have some that I could call and actually try to implement some of these things and put some of these things into practice? It's a great question. The answer is right now on, on the recruiting side, the employer side, the answer is no. Um, we don't offer that. Um, we do offer something on the college side. Uh, we, you can have a group come in and, and based on some standards that NACE put together, do an assessment and help with I mean, they won't be there to implement, but give you suggestions on implementation. But um, from the college side, I think that the, the best thing we'd offer, I don't know, I, uh, that I can think of right now is, is connecting you with someone who either in your industry or in another industry probably would be more willing to say, hey, do you mind if I spend an hour? Like, so give you a perfect example. 
uh, two years ago, I got a call from someone at MasterCard. We don't compete for the same talent. You know, it's a totally different market. And they said, could you come in? Um, we're based in Westchester. We know where you live. Uh, they were like 20 minutes from my house. Could you come in and spend two hours with our head of HR and our head of recruiting just to talk to them? I said, you know, through NACE, absolutely. So, so you know, maybe it's not direct implementation, but I think there's other people in the room that might be willing to help you out there. So. Uh, yeah, thank you yeah, so much. Yeah, I was going to say, you're yeah. like a marked man now. Yeah. So, <laughs> um, so thank you so much, Dan. Um, um, again, uh, EY has just been a fantastic partner um, for this event. This is not something they need to do. Um, as you guys have heard, Dan has one or two responsibilities. He's also a husband, a dad, and apparently puts out fires in his part time. Uh, yeah. In part time. So. Um, Another, another thanks that I really want to give um, is to WCN, our sponsor, for doing the live streaming and the recordings. When you guys get back in the groove, probably late in December, mm. exactly, it's mm. like this. Yes, if you buy this, you get your chamois towel. <laughs> the chamois. Sham wow. Yes. yes. Um, and, um, and also, um, if the folks who are in the room, the, the guy wearing the uh, Mickey Mouse uh, ears over there, that's, that's Peter Clayton from Total Picture, and he is the uh, official videographer of the event today. So he's not just looking nerdy, he actually is being nerdy. Um, so we, here's what's going to happen now. We're going to break for roughly an hour um, until 1.05. We thought we would not do it at the top of the hour just to mess everybody up a little bit. Um, they're in the hall. You're going to find um, a beautiful assortment of like sandwiches and sodas and stuff like that. Or if you're from one of the other states, pop. Um, <laughs> if you are from, I think from the uh, UK, is it soft drinks? Uh, that's what I grew up with when I was in Canada. We didn't call pop or sodas soft drinks. Um, there, there unfortunately are no adult beverages. That might be something to do afterward. Where's my beer guy? There he is. We, we'll this is that true. Now. We should next time. You are on the spot. <laughs> and if you're a member of NACE, we know your email address. Um, and um, so we're going to break for that hour, have lunch, and then what's going to happen is we're going to do the unconference format. So it's going to be quite different than this. We're going to break up um, this room, I think, into two. There's going to be a little WCN mini studio in here where they're going to be um, doing like live panel discussions, live streaming it, recording it. And then in the other three rooms, they're going to be what we call track leaders. There'll be a person who will be moderating a discussion. So, you know, 10, 20, 30 people or whatever per room. So there are going to be four rooms going simultaneously, breakout sessions. Um, Bill Borman from our partner True is going to meet everybody in here at 105. And if you think what I just said was confusing and you're bewildered, then wait, because Bill, Bill will give you all the instructions that you don't need. Um, so enjoy lunch. Thank you.